what I began to do is I said, let's just say you're at sea and you're in 1978 and you're looking forward and you, you think object-oriented programming is cool. How would you build C++ if you were in C? And then how would you build Python and object orientation of Python if you were in C? And this turned out to be great. I mean, I just, all of a sudden, this like giant road opened up in front of me. And the That's last right. the last few parts of the class are literally implementing dictionary, string, and list, the core data structures of Python. And so we look at Python code, and then we implement in C the kinds of things under the covers to implement the list object, the string object, and the dictionary object. And then the, the way the course ends, the C course ends, is we literally do as the last exercise of the course, the first exercise of my Python course, except that we do it in C. And so it's this, it's this beautiful, it's this beautiful kind of like, whoa, what a beautiful story. I mean, again, I think of this as a storytelling, not as like, yeah. learn this, learn that, but it's this beautiful story. Now, one of the things that's happened since we last talked, I don't know if we talked since I interviewed um, Brian Kernigan, the guy who wrote the book. Did, did we talk about that? No, you, you, no, we haven't. No, you said you were going to talk to him at some point. That was where we ended it last time. Well, I mean, I, uh, start that story a little bit earlier, right? So there's this book from 1978 that you cannot buy. It's not available online. So the re part of the reason it took me four years to make it is the first two years, I basically stole the book. I bought a bunch of used copies of the book. I cut off a spine of the best one. I digitized it at high level and I OCR'd it. And then I put all that stuff in GitHub and I hired a bunch of graduate students to go over line by line, fix every single thing to make a cool online version of this. And I made all the uh, code executable and I made all the all this stuff and I built this book without ever knowing if I was going to get in trouble. And so a large part of the four years was talking to lawyers to see, could am I going to get in trouble for what I just did? I, was, I just had to do it because it's just like, I love this book so much. So, um, yeah, but there was a good reason. The book is out of print. It's not available. It's not, and it's not and accessible. It's like a licensing thing you were thinking about using it, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and, and the lawyers told me there's a thing called fair use, right? It's academic purposes. It's yeah. a historical thing. So lawyers felt like I had a pretty good chance, right? I, it was enough of a good chance for me to go forward. So I built this perfect, beautiful digital copy of the book. And right before we were going to put it, start the process to convert it to go on Coursera, I thought to myself that I better send a note. This is a December last year, 12 months ago. I better send a note to Brian Kernigan because even though my lawyers said that we would fight them and I had a good case, I did not want to offend uh, someone who I considered like a god, right, in, the, in computer science. So I yeah. sent a note December of last year. I mean, December two years ago, December 20. I said, Brian, I made this book and I uh, hope you like it. And I didn't hear from him for a couple of weeks. And then, and then he, uh, he said, hmm, that's interesting. I have included on this email the editor of that book from Pearson. And, uh, and so I'm like, oh boy. And so I, I, uh, <laughs> yeah. and so I, 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 I replied to the email and I sent a note to Gary, the fellow at Pearson. I said, Gary, I love this book. It's a great book. I'm using it under fair use. Da -da 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 I think it's a good thing and people are going to love it. And I love the 1978 edition. Da -da 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 -da. And Gary said, could we get together on a Zoom call? And I'm like, oh, damn, that is not going to go well at all. So so Gary, I, I'm like, I'm just like I thought, should I, should I, call the university lawyers and tell them I'm going to get on a Zoom call with Pearson? Should I call my own lawyers? Should I do whatever? I thought about it for a very long time. I finally say, you know what? I think I'm just going to go alone on this particular one. And I'm going to schedule a call with Gary, the Pearson editor of the book. So I get on the call with Pearson and there's one other guy. And the guy looks like me. He's like old, goatee, white, gray hair. And he says, the first thing out of his mouth is like, man, I love what you did with the book. I'm like, oh, okay, this is not going to be oh, so that's bad. Right. <laughs> this is not going to be so that's bad. Right. And then the next thing he said is, could I have a copy of it? I'm like, what? Wow. I'm like, of course you can have a copy of it. So it turns out that they have been um, resurrecting old books 